On March 6, 2024, 18-year-old Kadir Diaz, who was about to become a father, said goodbye to his mom, Tanisha, as he left for a late-night drive with his buddies, Asar Thomas and Dante DeLuce. But around 3 a.m. the following morning, Dante unexpectedly showed up alone at Tanisha's door. Visibly shaken, Dante claimed that the three guys had gotten caught up in a high-speed police chase in Kadir's Nissan Maxima, and that Asar, who was behind the wheel, had crashed the car, causing everyone to run off in different directions. Worried sick, Tanisha checked with local hospital and police to see if her son had been admitted or arrested anywhere. But when talking to the authorities, she soon realized that the story Dante told her was a complete lie and that her son had likely been kidnapped. Tragically, after several weeks of desperate searching, Kadir is still missing, leaving many to fear the worst. Could he be the latest victim of human trafficking in Philadelphia? There was an update from the time I actually finished writing this script, recording and editing it. Asar has actually been found deceased, unfortunately. His body was found in the Schuylkill River. There aren't any details about how his body got there, so I don't have a lot of information on that. Hello, strangers and strangelings. Welcome back to the Strange Bar and Grill. I'm serving up another true crime story time. Now, I usually have a drink to put me right where I need to be to tell these dark, strange stories. But I promised I would do a juice cleanse with my wife. So today's episode is brought to you by Juice. It's loose. Go get you some. And as always, it's unbranded juice because I'm not getting paid to promote. So someone wants to write me a check. But pull up a chair if you like strange true crime and storytelling. Then this is the place to be here with me, JP. And as you follow along as I tell these stories, I just want you to remember one thing. I'm starving because I'm just drinking nothing but juice. But I know some of you want to hear my normal catchphrase, so here it goes. I've been drinking, but I ain't been driving. Let's go. Kadir Diaz was born in 2005 to his devoted mother, Tanisha, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, along with his younger sister, Mahogany Jackson, and two other siblings. Not a lot is known about his early years, but as Kadir entered his teens, he developed a passion for rap music and dreamed of making it big one day as an artist. His mom described him as a hilarious kid who could always make the whole family crack up with his quick wit and infectious energy. Kadir took that same likable personality to his job as a teenager, where co-workers saw him as a hard worker and a joy to be around. So it was no surprise that with his great reputation and charm, that Kadir was also quite the ladies man. He eventually decided to settle down with his girlfriend and was excitedly awaiting the birth of their first child later this year. But despite Kadir's many positive qualities, it seems he didn't always choose his friends wisely. At some point, he started hanging out with a guy named Dante DeLuce, who appeared to be a bad influence. And on that ill-fated day in March, a series of events unfolded that would expose the seedy underbelly of Philly and leave the Diaz family shattered. On the evening of March 6th, 2024, Kadir let his mom know he was going out with his friends, Asar and Dante, and would probably be back in the early morning hours. Since Kadir was a responsible adult, Tanisha didn't question his plans. She just told him to have a good time, figuring, you know, he needed to blow off some steam before his baby arrived and new parenting duties kicked in. Asar and Dante picked Kadir up that night and the trio took off down the street in Kadir's 2012 Nissan. Little did Tanisha know, she wouldn't see her son again. Just a few hours later, around 3 a.m., there was a knock at the door. When Tanisha opened it, there stood Dante, looking rattled and afraid. He was alone. Dante claimed he had no clue where Kadir and Nassar were, just that they'd been in some kind of accident. Tanisha demanded more details. And according to Dante, the guys had gotten into a high-speed chase with the cops, but Asar, who was driving, crashed the car on Lincoln Drive. In a panic, the three of them jumped out and bolted in opposite directions to avoid getting busted. Dante said he ran as fast as he could to a shell station on Ridge and asked to use the phone to get a ride. Someone came to get him and dropped him in Uptown Philly on 71st Avenue, where he hopped into Kadir's Maxima, which they'd parked earlier. Then for some odd reason, Dante decided to drive it to Tanisha's house to deliver the bad news. 
And as you can imagine, Tanisha's heart sank hearing that her teenage son was mixed up in a police chase and now on the run from the law. But she soon find out that Dante's whole story was just a pack of lies. That police chase? It never happened. By that Friday, March 8th, Tanisha was at her wit's end. Over 24 hours had passed and no word from Kadir, and the weird story about his disappearance had her fearing the worst. After trying all day to reach him with no luck, she decided to file an official missing persons report with the Philly PD. It wasn't an easy choice. At the time, Tanisha had no reason to believe Dante's tale about the chase. She knew that reporting Kadir missing might lead the cops right to her son, who was supposedly in hiding, but worried sick that he could be badly hurt or worse from the so-called accident. She put her fears aside. All she cared about was finding Kadir safe and sound. But as soon as Tanisha mentioned the wild police chase, the officers were confused. They had zero reports of any such incident or car wreck on Lincoln Drive. The shocking news made Tanisha realized Kadir could be in even deeper trouble than she thought. She hit the streets with a Philly PD, searching high and low for her missing child. And what they uncovered would take Tanisha's nightmare to a whole new level. The very next day, Saturday, March 9th, the heartbroken mother rallied the neighborhood to help comb the city streets for any sign of Kadir. Tanisha told CBS News that one search party made a chilling discovery in Fairmont Park, Kadir's abandoned Nissan, along with some of his and Asar's belongings. There's been no activity on Kadir's bank account and his phone is gone, Tanisha said. It's like they vanished into thin air. With these troubling details, Tanisha started fearing the worst. But then the special victims unit dropped an even bigger bombshell. They suspected Kadir's disappearance might be linked to gang activity or an organized kidnapping ring. Now, three weeks later, even after tireless searches by the Diaz family and police, Kadir is still nowhere to be found. The community is sick with worry, wondering if this could be a sign of more danger to come. Now, unfortunately, that's where the official investigation stands for now. As I mentioned earlier, Asar's body was found in the Skolkul River, but there's still no information on how he got there and what happened to him. But Tanisha and the Diaz family continue to raise awareness and working together with Asar Thomas's loved ones who are just as desperate to figure out what happened to Asar and Kadir as well. Given the chilling assessment from the Special Victims Unit and the fact that Kadar has been missing for over three weeks and Asar's body has been found in a river, I just can't help but to think that the odds of a happy ending are getting slimmer and slimmer by the day. So let's dig into some of the theories about what might have happened. Theory number one, possible gang violence. First, let me say that while I tried to include more background on Asar Thomas in this video, I wasn't able to find much coverage on his specific case compared to Kadir's. But make no mistake, both of these cases are equally horrific. And based on what I could find, it sounds like Asar was also a stand-up guy. It sounds like he was even a college student at the time when this all went down. Very funny guy, fun to be around, everyone loved him. Couldn't imagine he had any enemies. So I don't think Asar or Kadir are to blame here. Instead, I believe we need to take a hard look at Dante DeLuce, who clearly lied through his teeth to Tanisha and acted super shady that night. So assuming he's guilty, what really went down? I'll be straight with you, I don't have any concrete proof here. This is pure speculation based on the story Tanisha Diaz shared. But if we assume she's telling the truth, then it seems obvious that Dante was never in any kind of accident with Kadir and Asar, which means he lied for a reason. Maybe he made up a story about them being on the run to hide the fact that he knew they'd actually been jumped by some dangerous people. Hell, Dante might have even set this whole thing up himself. It sounds like a setup if you know what that looks like or seen that happen before. This sounds like a possible setup. Again, I've got no evidence to back that up. That's all alleged. Don't be suing me. It's just the only reason I can think of that he'd make up such a wild story to tell Kadir's mom. A wild story that can be easily fact-checked. I'm not sure where his head's at, but young people are dumb. Let's be honest here. <laughs> now, if there is some gang involvement here, then I hate to say it, but missing for several weeks. We saw what happened to Asari, he ended up in a river. It's not looking too hopeful 
for Kadir at this moment. But based on what the special victims unit said about the possible gang connection, there's a very real chance that Kadar is no longer with us. And I know some people were trying to hold out some hope that maybe he was kidnapped and being held for ransom. But looking at what happened to Asar and how he was found, I'm not very optimistic. And another theory is there's a possibility of human trafficking. The special victims unit did tell Tanisha her son might have been abducted. So if the experts think that could be what happened to Kadir, we have to at least consider it. Um, Tanisha also shared on a GoFundMe page for Kadir that she's gotten a bunch of scary threats from fake Instagram accounts saying they know where she lives. So you can see why she's terrified for her other kids still at home. And if Kadir really was kidnapped, it's probably only a matter of time before those same creeps start asking for money in exchange for his life. But Tanisha says that hasn't actually happened yet, at least not that she's aware of. And another disturbing possibility is that Kadir and Asar maybe have been forced into human trafficking. Maybe Asar fought back and he was killed and they dumped him in the river. We don't know, I'm speculating at this point. But this is a dark reality in many cities, especially in large cities, including Philly. So given Kadir's young age and the fact that he's been gone for so long and the area's track record with this kind of thing, we can't completely rule that out. And I know it sounds far-fetched, like something out of a movie, but the sad truth is, if Kadir and Asar were taken by some trafficking ring, that might not even be the worst possible ending here. Recently, the president of the Community College of Philadelphia, Dr. Ellen Joe Waller, talked about how young black people are often targeted in these schemes. But she pointed out that it's usually women and girls that get swept up in that world. But it's not completely impossible for it to happen to a young black male. For young black men who go missing though, I'm sorry to say, organ harvesting, is the more common threat. But the longer that Kadir is missing, the bleaker things look for him. I personally find it kind of strange that they found Asar's body in the river, but they haven't found Kadir's body. I think Dante knows a lot more than what he's letting on, and he may have set them up for whatever reason, and we won't know until more details come out. But at the end of the day, I think we all just want to see Philly PD do everything in their power to track down whoever's responsible and make sure no other family has to endure this kind of pain. But of course, there's always a chance, however slim, that this story isn't over. But look, I don't want to wrap up on total doom and gloom and just negativity here because the truth is, until we have a solid proof otherwise, there's still hope that Kadir is still out there somewhere. Out there, somewhere alive and okay. And if you know me, I'm always trying to look on the bright side and hold out hope there. So is there any chance that Kadir just ran into some trouble and he's laying low? I mean, I personally don't believe he's just laying low because they did find Asar's body. I think something happened to them, whether they were being abducted or some type of gang violence or something to that effect. Dante's story was completely bogus. But what if Dante was telling the truth? What if they were involved in a police chase, wrecked the vehicle, and they all just scattered? And the police chased them down, and let's say the cops were corrupt and murdered them. That wouldn't be the most far-fetched thing that I've said on my channel. That would actually be very mild. But what do you all think? What do you think happened to Kadir and Asar? All we can really do now is just wait to hear more information about this case. So maybe Kadir will turn up and hopefully put his loved ones' minds at ease.